The Olden World Written by Tsar Yoshi Chapter 491 Burdens to Share The door to the empty cabin Maple had put Valet in slid open once again, and Maple stepped back through, closing it tightly behind her and sitting down beside the bed. Aww, Valet grunted, shifting at the disturbance. Don't let me wake you, Maple whispered, looking away into the darkness. I just finished talking to Amber. Just thought you might sleep better if you weren't alone. Not asleep, Valet mumbled. Just tired. Bananas. Don't you have Starlight to snuggle with or something, Iron Flanks? Maple shook her head. She's in the observation room and said she just wanted to think about something for a while. You, on the other hoof, looked like you needed company. I told you, I just need to think about stuff for a while, too. I'll be fine, Iron Flanks. Seriously, you know how much I hate moping. Feeling like myself always makes me feel better. I'll be rude and chipper again in the morning, no sweat. Maple sighed and leaned against the bed. Unless you aren't, in which case you'll feel bad about yourself for not being able to cheer up, and that will make it harder to cheer up and you'll get stuck in such a spiral that you won't even be able to get out of bed. At least, maybe, maybe you'll be fine, but I've been there and just wanted to be here now, just in case it helps. Valet made half an effort to roll over, then fell back and bounced slightly in place. Oh. Amber said you found something out, Mabel murmured, about your past that you didn't like. She didn't say what, other than that you asked her to keep it a secret and she couldn't tell me. But she also said you needed someone to talk about things here, someone who could give you a shoulder and not be thousands of miles away. I wish I could help. Valet pressed her chin harder into a pillow. I don't wanna. That's okay, Maple said, pushing down the sting of bitterness at not being trusted enough to hear something. Valet had her reasons. I can still be here, right? You can try to go to sleep. If there's anything I can do, I'll be right here. I don't wanna, Valet sniffed, repeating herself. With Amber, she was fun to be around and I felt like a lighter and maybe I could trust her with something really stupidly big, since even if she took it bad, I didn't really know her, so I'd be safe taking the risk because I'd have less to lose. Bananas, you stuck your neck out for me again and again and again in Ironridge, trusting me even when I tried my best to give you every reason not to and then even bailed me out when I was dumb and got trapped in the flame district and I had never even met you before. Let alone did anything for you. I didn't get it. Maybe you're just that stupidly kind. Not really a thing I try to question or think about because I want that. Want friends like that. Didn't really realize how much I was missing it those past bajillion years on my own. But it feels like I'm borrowing against myself or pushing my luck or something. And at some point I could just go too far and stuff would break and I'd lose all this good stuff. I hate being a wuss, but I don't want to lose. Maple sat for a moment, thinking. You never understood why I did everything for you? You still don't? Her tone was sad, more than anything, and Valet flattened her ears. I mean, I would guess this, but... Uh, bananas, I'm not supposed to get scared about stuff like this. I didn't think about it much either, Maple admitted. I also hoped it didn't need to be thought about, but there is a reason. I spent a long time in Riverfall feeling powerless, insignificant, and, like, whatever I did and wouldn't really change anything. When I went to Iron Ridge with Starlight, what I wanted to do more than anything was make a difference with my life. To do something worth doing. And there were a lot of things that either weren't worth doing or were too big for one hopeful little pony. But I saw you and heard you and that cart ride we took to Grand Acorn. And you felt like someone I really, truly might have been able to help. And don't forget, you helped us first. Me and Starlight were lost in the Flame District, and you tracked us down and brought us food and guided us out. Valet's eyelids drooped. Huh, I forgot all about that. Maple nodded. And so that's what I did. You had been kind to us, lending us through to the Stone District and finding us in the mines, and keeping us safe from the Defense Force and guiding us to where we wanted to go without us ever doing anything for you. So I wanted to repay you, felt like I could make a difference, and when you got trapped and needed our help... Bananas, Valet groaned, thinking slowly. I seriously did do all that, didn't I? Was I always like that? Thinking I was a menace, but actually just being nice all the time? 
I mean, I tried my hardest to avoid doing anything really evil and to make up for the pranks when no one was looking, but you did, Maple Humms. For us, at least. I didn't see you before that. But don't think of it as who else want. We're friends now. I'm very attached to seeing you do better. And if it's hard to imagine me helping you carry whatever burdens you have just because I can, imagine me helping myself instead by feeling good about helping you. Really, I'm doing both, and that's how friendship should work. Yeah, but... Uh, Valet frowned, looking slightly desperate. What if it's something you can help with? Like, you think you can just walk up and ask history to rewrite itself? Maple returned the frown with a small smile. I can try. Two mares and a filly fending off a foreign nation's invasion and killing a swarm of magical windigos sounds impossible too, but we did it. <sighs> Valet shuddered. I don't want to say it. I hate being scared. <sighs> I already told you you don't have to, Maple insisted, scooting just a little onto the bed. But Amber told me it would help you, so I'm here to listen if you ever change your mind. Valet grimaced for a few seconds longer, then her face finally broke. Remember all those times you yelled at me for warning you I wasn't really a pony? Maple's heart sped up in worry, but she had asked for this. She would be ready. I meant it, Valet went on, unable to stop now that she had started. The real Valet kicked the bucket years ago, drained by empty moon glass just like Niala only a year earlier. Only difference was she lost her body and I hung onto her soul. She lost the real Valet's soul and hung onto her body. Tried to get some stupid mad scientist to put her back together. Wound up putting a real moon glass cutie mark back in instead. And that's me. So look alike from space, notorious for possessing playing ponies and causing personality disorders. Got you to agree it was shady and definitely evil even. Just my body's original habitant was kind of gone, so I've got it all to myself in here. And that's what I am. Maple's vision was already blurry. Oh, Valet. See? Valet sighed, defeated. Wish I could have pushed my luck about it earlier, but I checked and you told me to stop ragging on myself instead of digging into what was up. Thought I'd leave well enough alone and- But it's not leaving well enough alone, Maple choked, leaning forward. Maybe I just didn't understand the situation or needed to revise my opinion or- She swallowed. But you said you just found this out talking to Amber? Nah, there was something on top of this. Something more? Uh, Maple's ears folded. Valet, if worrying about this is what you've been dealing with, can I hug you? I know Amber said you had some bad experiences with that, but it's how I know best how to help, and what else did you learn? Uh, Valet raised an eyebrow at her, now inches away. Ah, yeah, sure, knock yourself out. But you're already crying, and if I say more, you're gonna cry harder, and that's gonna make me cry, and bananas, I hate that too. I don't wanna be a wuss. Maple lunged over, closing the last of the distance, and glomped onto Valet, putting a hoof behind her neck and sitting up, trying to cradle Valet's head against her chest. If I didn't stop you in the Eastern Valley after the dam was destroyed, when I couldn't move or speak and you needed a van, taking care of yourself isn't being a wuss. Now, what did you find out? Mm, no. Valet resisted, struggling and trying to hide her face against Maple, but Maple felt a wet spot growing against her chest where Valet's eyes were. Zoana! Shh, Maple consoled, wrapping her forelegs around Valet's back and rocking back and forth a little. I'm here. Valet turned to the side enough to suck down a wet breath. This whole time I was constantly telling myself that just because there was a super high chance Moonglass actually came from the moon and does a ton of bad stuff and there were old legends in my place that the creator of bad ponies is up there and is some sort of monster, there might be a totally innocent and reasonable explanation for what I am or where I came from or what Moonglass does to real ponies and I f thought maybe it would all be okay and... <sighs> she wiped her eyes again on Maple's coat. Adorable. The factory chief dude from Iron Ridge, he was one of those scientists. Don't remember if I told you. Remember? But nightmare module thing Puddles had on her tongue? Amber got him to talk to me since we knew he knew something about those and I wanted to know how dangerous she was. Uh, she sniffed again hard. They're made from moon glass and stuff. A whole bunch of science jargon I didn't follow at all. And they're ridiculously bad news. 
Her voice was raising now, and Maple could plainly see her gritted teeth and clenched eyes and flattened back ears. He said stuff like how they're part of some evil super weapon, and Moonglass is supposedly full of a whole bunch of spells and designs and stuff to let someone build these nightmare modules. And they're like machines or something that only bad ponies can use, and Moonglass is probably some sort of attack or something that was deliberately sent here to do bad stuff, and that means me with it. I don't want to be a weapon. I wanted there to be some innocent explanation for what I was or why I was here, and now that's impossible. It's what I spent all my time hoping and wishing I'd find, and now I got the opposite. I don't know what to do. I don't... (laughs) Valet was straight up clutching Maple like a pillow, pressed into her chest and beginning to hyperventilate as her tears flowed freely. For her part, Maple sat in a quiet stupor, crying in solidarity, and doing the only thing she could when words failed her, being there and holding on. End of chapter 491